Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Professor Bumbaga. How are you it doing? Worked. It actually worked. I can't believe it. No, it's wonderful. Yeah, it works very well. And your your picture is very good, your video. Good. How are you Sorry. doing? Just a bit. Okay. Uh, not too well, actually. I was thinking about maybe we should postpone, but having had some coffee and had breakfast, <clears throat> I feel a little more alert. All right. Okay. Well, I'm very sorry. Uh, I mean, if you're not feeling well, I, I really don't want to be a burden. I uh, I am I'm at your disposal to do it any time. But if if you feel okay, then uh, it's it's completely up to you. Okay. Well, we'll see what my memory brings forth. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well. Well, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, to reiterate that. Uh, this is not a this is not a very formal interview. It's it's just a very casual conversation, and it's okay. it's just a friendly chat, and just wanting to find find out more things about your fascinating life and all of your experiences and achievements and challenges and whatever you wish to share. Okay. Well, we'll see what I can bring up out of the memory. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, well, for starters. Uh, how should I address you? Gene. Uh, uh... Oh, right. Okay. Well, <laughs> it, it, it's a great privilege to <laughs> to be allowed to call you Gene. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Gene, uh, we where, have... By the uh, way, where are you, by the way, uh, geographically? Uh, I'm, I'm in London. I'm in London. Oh, in okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Good. So... Uh, yeah, so I'm a professor of technology education and music at UCL, uh, and uh, a great admirer of your work, with which I started from from the very beginning. Uh, we have uh, spoken in the past, but I was wearing a different hat than we have spoken when I contacted you on behalf of Sempre for your uh, yeah. Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, and also about uh, the possibility of you examining one of my doctoral students, Vicky, right. Felici, who is uh, who is also uh, very much uh, kind of centered on uh, many of the things or a very small subset of the things that you have done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK. Uh, so, yeah, you, you would be amused to. Uh, to know that uh, although UCL pretends to be one of those places that uh, is one of the world's most liberal institutions, uh, until seven years ago, uh, when I came to the discussion, UCL did not have an official music related course. <laughs> so, so, which is very funny. Um, yes. And and the, the thing that I developed was uh, called interactions of music and science. So it's it's one of those very you made you made it legitimate by adding science. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Of course, uh, I am based at the Institute of Education, and the IOE, as as you might know, had a long tradition in music education as a, as a discipline as a, at a postgraduate study uh, level. Uh, but we wanted to do something music specific, and uh, and I'm absolutely del delighted that you wanted to chat with me. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so uh, why why I'm doing this, uh, Gene, is just because at some point on the road to recovery, for uh, having been dealing with my own personal health issues, I I just discovered podcasts and audiobooks and I realized how much I I really like them uh -huh. uh, and I wanted to do something similar for our world the kind of intersection of science and the arts and music and uh, education and uh, you are one of the very few people in the world that actually uh, celebrate all of these things in that intersection that's that's the wonderful thing about your work <laughs> so I was just wondering whether we can uh, uh, unpack some of these experiences and uh, just make other people aware 
about the wealth of of this past and tell them a little bit about your journey and about your experiences. And we can start as early as you wish. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should uh, make some questions. I don't know where to begin. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously I had a... a, a I'm I'm very familiar with with your background, and I have gone through uh, different information pages, but also in the past because I I published some information about your work uh, for the award for the Semper Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, so I know that uh, you are from uh, uh, Jewish heritage, a Jewish family, and that you uh, uh, were born and raised in the in the U.S. So. Uh, so essentially, you're first generation American. Uh, no, that's not true. My no? parents, my parents were born in this in this country. Oh, your parents were born in the states as well. Definitely. Oh, right. Okay. So I assume that they were first generation immigrants to the no, U.S. Oh, right. Their, okay. Their parents were. Oh, I see. Okay. And uh, I mean, growing up. Uh, um, I assume that you grew up in a in a, in a in an environment that felt more American than uh, anything else, or did you Couldn't also have been speak? more? It was in the Middle West, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, oh. <clears throat> uh, and how my two parents' families got there is already a story. Uh, right. <clears throat> but uh, and Minneapolis was about as uh, uh, American in a in a particular flavor, <laughs> um, okay. as as any place in the country. But uh, the <clears throat> they grew up, each of them grew up in a household with many children in each family, uh, and uh, very much in the midst of the Middle West, as we, which is a very funny. I keep I often come back to it. Why is the middle of the country, the, this country, called the Middle West? I I I, I was never able to understand that. Uh, I don't understand it either, yeah. except that maybe it got labeled before there was anything more west. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's called Midwest now, but it's no longer in the middle or in the West. So, uh, Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, uh, my, my wife is American. I uh, uh -huh. forgot to mention that, and we haven't discussed that. And uh, uh, she had a, 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 a teaching position at Bowling Green State University in Ohio. So I... Uh -huh. uh, I became aware of the Midwest issue when I was visiting <laughs> <Yes>. her. <laughs> right. Nobody talks about it, but every once in a while it hits me again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, and w were you raised multilingual or was English, w were you raised multilingual? Oh, not at all. It was totally, totally English. My parents talked Yiddish when they didn't want the children to know what they were talking about. Oh, wow. Okay. The same way that I, when I want to curse, when I'm driving, I, I, I talk Greek to, and, and my daughter and my wife cannot understand them. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Exactly. Okay. That's, that's one of the privileges of, <laughs> of multilingualism. Yeah. Right. All right. Okay. And, and, uh, and did you have siblings growing up? Yes, I have. I had one brother who's three years older. Okay. I am. Uh, and who was very mean to me all the time I was growing up. <laughs> well, that's well. It, it's probably because you were so close uh, in age, I assume. Uh, well, we were three years apart. Mm. But he was uh, a sick child with asthma and that kind of business. And then I came along and displaced some of his attention. Oh wow! Okay. So you were the uh, you were the uh, celebrated little one, the the, the special we, child. Yes, I was exactly. Okay, and uh, so when did music start for you? Were your parents musical? 
No, not at all. Uh, okay. So you, started... you were the, so you were the first person in the family to have anything to do with music. Absolutely, except maybe some distant cousins somewhere or other. All right. But nobody. I was very much alone. Oh wow! Okay, and uh, was that your choice, or did no, your parents try to mother, force her? My mother was a big, uh, well, I could call it exploiter, if you, if you want. Okay. But uh, it started when I was. Uh, it started seriously when I was six. Uh, oh. But before that, uh, <clears throat> the year before the the year that I had my fifth birthday, my parents went to Europe so that my father could specialize in internal medicine. They didn't. I guess there was no way to do that before. You had to go. He went anyhow. They went to Vienna and they left my brother and myself in a boarding school. Okay which was horrible and uh, probably infected the whole rest of my life. But that that's where I started playing the piano. Oh, wow. At the okay. school. When I came back, I was in first grade uh, <clears throat> and had the local neighborhood piano teacher, uh, <clears throat> Lavillian Jones was her name. Um, and uh, that was, uh, I, uh, while at the boarding school, I had learned to read and other stuff. So I skipped first grade and went into second grade. But I got out of, from the very beginning, I got out of school early to come home and practice, which I didn't do a lot of <laughs> at that right. time. Uh, and um, uh, and I didn't. I really. Uh, I I was. Uh, st I didn't play with other kids. I didn't grow up. Oh wow! Um, okay, so so music was your 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 center focus at at a very early stage. Yes, not okay. not necessarily at my choice. Okay. But, my mother was really uh, building this child prodigy. Oh, so 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 your mother was dedicated to uh, very to much so developing your I had, I had prodigious side. I had to practice for fifteen minutes before breakfast, uh, or at least before school every day. All right. Well. It, it's quite interesting that uh, you didn't become disaffected about that and you had such a stellar ca career, although the pressure well, was there. It was it was uh, sort of stamped as my identity. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Not by me, but uh, I was separated. I was uh, isolated, really, from... With, in any case, I didn't play with other kids. All right. So, so was it your mother then that uh, promoted you uh, for the cover of the uh, for, for uh, that special photo that exists in various websites with you in front of the piano for yeah. uh, the Good Housekeeping magazine? Was that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So she was. So your mother was your agent from a very early stage. Well, my. She wasn't my agent. She was more her. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, how how old were you, from what you can remember, where you have the metacognition to kind of realize that you've started enjoying the piano and music? When, when, uh, when do you feel that enjoyment started kicking in? Probably when I was in college. Oh wow! Okay, so <laughs> so all of the time before college was just uh, hard labor, was it? Just about, yeah. Oh wow! I, get, I got out of school early, came home, and supposedly was practicing. 
but more I was playing with my dog or <clears throat> listening to the radio or something. I also was practicing, but right. there I was at home alone. So, so am I allowed to ask? So, all of this wealth of work that you have done on on education is that a, a reaction because of your kind of sense of uh, of justice and uh, in order to foster education as it should have been instead of what you experienced absolutely oh wow okay <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible so so uh b because i mean it, you know it isn't as if i'm thinking of it that way all the time okay. but i'm i'm sure that it's there in the background i see i see so uh okay but but in college probably because you had a very formal and a very intense musical development in college you did not pursue music did you uh from the get-go no i was a music major for the first two years and i hated it it didn't <laughs> seem to have anything uh, especially the music theory which seemed to me to have nothing to do with what i was doing <laughs> Uh, or the kinds of things I was thinking about. And so after the second year, I switched and became a philosophy major. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and why particularly philosophy? Was that because that was one of the highest things that could be? Uh... I, think, I think it was strongly influenced by the fact that uh, the uh, main uh philosophy professor was a friend of the family <laughs> oh i see okay <laughs> and that was uh, uh was that at columbia is that where you no that was in minnesota that was in minnesota okay all of, uh, uh uh all of i got my my ba and my undergraduate degree at minnesota okay okay uh so, so what happened after that? Uh, during that time, uh, did you continue to to perform as a, as a pianist? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, after uh, at the same time that I stopped being a music major, I started studying with Schnabel. So I was going. I was living in New York, and going to. Minnesota to the university in the summertime and taking classes at Columbia at this while I was in New York. Okay. So so Artur Schnabel uh, for for our audience uh, was a uh, an absolutely colossal kind of figure in in uh, piano pedagogy and piano performance. Uh, yeah. was he based was he not based in in Germany? Not then, he was he left because of Hitler. I see, okay. And went to first to England for a while and then ended up in New York City in a in the Peter Stuyvesant Hotel <laughs> with okay. his wife. Uh and that's where he lived uh until he died. Okay. And and and, and that's how, where the that's where the lessons were. And and yeah. how did you manage to get such a kind of prestigious pl placement? Was that the family again? Was it because no? Of it was my teacher. Uh, my the my teacher in Minneapolis was the white had had uh, got to Minneapolis because her husband was the principal cellist hired as the principal cellist. Also refugees, he was the uh, assistant principal cellist in, in the Berlin Philharmonic, and then fled, <laughs> and ended up as the principal cellist of the Minneapolis Symphony. Oh and wow! His wife had been a student of Schnabel. Oh wow! So so are we talking mid forties, nineteen forties? We're talking, uh, uh, yeah. All right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so, at, so at that time, you are a a, a young lady 
so you you must already be a, a kind of high caliber performing pianist and you're just honing your skills with with schnabel yeah i think uh i can't re i i can't, i didn't play any big concerts or anything like that mm -hmm. it was mostly local okay performances but, but you did have a performance portfolio you were keeping it alive at that yeah point. okay uh, mostly you know locally in uh, and so i would spend the uh school year so to speak in new york yeah. in in various establishments uh and then in the summertime i would come home to minneapolis and go take classes at the university in philosophy by that time okay so i mean i am extremely curious to see in this trajectory when do we start having anything to do with technology and all of the other stuff that you have done oh how does that where is the that really that Everything changed when I went when I came here to Berkeley, uh, to, and I was working with and being an assistant to Roger Sessions. Oh wow! So so that you're... was that that's what changed everything. Okay, so so your journey with Berkeley uh, began at the very beginning. Before you, before MIT was part of the discussion. Oh, way before. Yeah, way before that. Okay. Yeah, it. Uh, that I came to as a graduate student. Well, first of all, I graduated from Minnesota okay. <laughs> in philosophy, and then because then Schnabel sent me to Sessions. That's why I came here. He to work. He, I think Schnabel realized that I wasn't going to be a, a performing, you know, I wasn't going to take that route. Uh, and he s sent me to sessions. Okay, so so to work on music theory or right or what what we in in Europe call musicology, but translates as music theory. <laughs> yeah, in, in musicology the is hit yeah. history in this yeah. country. Yeah, it's a very strange thing, isn't it? And, yes, it but is. I, I assume that uh, it it has uh, changed in Europe as well because now they try to find different adjectives to slap in front of musicology in order to justify what <laughs> different people do. So they will have right. well, I em had... empirical or developmental or experimental <laughs> or, whatever, yeah. or ethnomusicology, right. yeah. Well, I had nothing to do with music history. I was okay. not interested. <laughs> okay, but, so it's it's not the socio scientific aspects, but the morphological aspects and how music works and how uh, composition works and uh, and all of that. Right and okay. uh, analysis, and I uh, I really uh, latched onto and enjoyed and appreciated. Uh, Sessions was a wonderful teacher. And for the first time, I uh, <clears throat> was exposed to serious analysis. I remember the very first music theory class I took with him. He spent the whole class on the first two uh, chords of the Eroica Symphony. Oh, okay. Well, that that that's good homework for a couple of months, isn't it? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> But it was amazing to me to see how the whole idea of what happens to those two chords uh, as the piece uh, goes on, and I, yeah, I just... and, and and quite a quite a big leap from the basic uh, kind of church ruled diatonic harmony that we were, which I hated, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and the and the uh, tritone and the parallel fifths that were not all allowed. that stuff. All right. I remember sitting in those classes and there was a guy, I can almost remember his name. Uh, we sat together and made jokes. And, <laughs> All right. Uh, in the, yeah. 
while the, the professor was talking about parallel fifths, <laughs> etc. Okay, so so this study, Jane was uh, Jean was uh, uh, towards an MA and masters after it, you... with 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 Roger Sessions. Yes. Okay. That was where I got my MA. So that was an MA in music theory, then. Uh, Correct. Oh, exactly. right. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, if I remember, uh, if I remember well, and if my notes are okay, after that, uh, somehow you end up in Paris. Yes, I got a Fulbright. Oh, okay. Uh, and Shabel wrote about a one sentence letter of recommendation. Okay. Uh, so I spent the year in Paris on the Fulbright. Right? Uh, uh, almost right after getting the MA in here in Berkeley. All right. Okay. So that was the beginning of uh, the 50s. I assume, kind of counting, 51. counting the years. It was 51, 52. Oh, right. Okay. So we are post-war. You've, you've finished your MA and you end up in Paris. So what do you do with the language? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Not much. Okay. I, I, I manage, but barely. <laughs> okay. Uh, and in Paris... Did you study uh, uh, close to someone specific or was it just a general kind of visit? Well, I took a, co a course in aesthetic. All right, okay. With Boulanger. Beautiful, beautiful Greek word. Yeah. All right. With, uh, with Boulanger, but uh, it was not, it was, I was doing my duty by the Fulbright. <laughs> I, I didn't, I mean, he was, it was not uh, very useful. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to sense, I mean, being familiar with your work, that the main objection might have been the kind of whole debate between appreciation and cognition, I assume? Something uh, like that. Okay. I mean, uh, uh, not exactly cognition. I mean, certainly cognition got into it more and more as life yeah. went on. But no, no, I, I, I mean, probably the cognitive dissonance between what you would have preferred to focus, which is much more scientific, as opposed to uh, pseudo philosophizing, which is the kind of aesthetics discussion about it. Right, but... and at the same time, uh, uh, attacking or something, critiquing theory as it was taught oh right okay which yeah. which i did not appreciate <laughs> okay so but, but certainly it was important so just so that i i i, I can uh, get in sync with the context had suzanne langer published philosophy in a new key by then or? yes and okay. i certainly read it <laughs> okay and uh and, and uh, did that uh, inform at all your your kind of viewpoint, or was it just a completely foreign? Uh, no, it wasn't completely foreign, but it wasn't sufficiently into the music. Okay, all the evidence. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Okay, very good. Uh, so, so, so. So, do you not feel, therefore, that you got much from Paris, or did you not? Was it I got just... a lot from Paris, but not to do with music. All I, mean, right. I had a good time, but oh, I also organized uh, a concert in the American Embassy, uh, and Sessions was at that point in Florence, and he came up and gave a little talk, and I, I gave a. Uh, recital or concert at the American Embassy and then I also played uh, I, I on the boat going across <laughs> I met a guy from Switzerland 
and he arranged concerts in Switzerland. Nice. So I played in various so, places. So for how long did you uh, did you remain in Europe then? Just one year. Just that even, one year. Not even a whole year. It was more like nine months. Okay. So. Uh, so after after that year, did you uh, go back to the states to uh, to uh, to seek employment, or did you try to continue your research? What 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 was the I kind went, of plan? Uh, I I went back to live with my parents, who at that point had moved to Los Angeles, uh -huh. um, and I <clears throat> um, I got a job at the University of Southern California teaching beginning music theory, which I did for a couple of years. All oh, right, uh, okay. Uh, and that was uh, for a couple of years, did you say? Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, so the, so it, it doesn't matter. I mean, we, we don't need a forensic timeline. Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, so... So the the move to California was that because of your of your father's work? Uh, I, no, I, my I, father had retired and was, and my mother hated Minnesota, but she had grown up in. Oh uh, wow! Okay, so she wanted so some warmer weather, did she? Exactly, she hated oh, the cold, oh, uh, and so when I uh, returned from France, they had moved to Los Angeles. And I moved in with them uh, and taught at USC until I got married. Oh wow, okay. And that was the uh, that was the the point where you uh, became Gene Bamberger then. Exactly. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and moved to Chicago at that point because my then husband w was a graduate student oh, okay. uh, at the University of. And the, the amazing thing, and I never really understood this, uh, I, it was sort of like I just set foot in Chicago and I got a job teaching at the University of Chicago. Oh, wow. Okay. And but because, I mean, even then, University of Chicago was one of the heavyweights in the States from, the, from the beginning, wasn't it? And I was, I got a job in the music department teaching beginning music theory. Okay. Well, you you seem surprised, but I mean your your trajectory up to that point was was stellar, and you studied close to the the biggest minds of, of, of the time at that point for music theory. Well, that's that's true, I you, suppose. But you uh, seem a bit surprised about it <laughs> for for some I strange was totally reason. Surprised, I had, I mean I hadn't published anything. I hadn't written it. You know, I hadn't mm -hmm. done anything that. Uh, people would really notice. And I was always in this pull between performance and, and theory. Okay. So for instance, I played a concerto with the University of Chicago Orchestra, <laughs> but I was teaching music theory. That's great. That's great. And that, uh, and, and that's, uh, that gig lasted uh, 10, 15 years? Uh, no. Let's see. Uh, I I haven't got the calendar in mind. That's a, that's all right. I because guess I, I, I guess I, that was fifty five, and my first son was born in fifty nine. Yeah, fifty five was when I got married and moved with my husband to Chicago. Chicago, okay. And you stayed in Chicago. So was Chicago? Oh, yeah, I stayed the, in Chicago until uh, '69. Okay. Yeah, that's right. In in '69, I moved to the East Coast. Yeah. So so this is when the uh, the journey with uh, MIT began, presumably. Yes, quite by accident. Oh, wow. Okay. Another accident. Another happy accident. Total accident. I went Very to, uh, I, sp I spent the first year in uh, Massachusetts 
without a job for the first time in many years by then. Okay. Um, but I went to uh, one of the standard music uh, uh, meetings, the, the, you know, just the, the usual thing. And on the way back, I happened to uh, share a, a train ride with, uh, what's his name? Doesn't matter. Uh, who was teaching in the music department at MIT. And he said, somebody was going on leave, I should go and talk to the chair and maybe I could uh, be a, you know, take his place for a year. So, so that was wasn't that wasn't Hal Aberson, was it? The, no, 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 that's okay. much later. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll think, he's a musicologist, the guy okay. who, um, uh, and, so I got the job uh, at MIT in the music department to take the place of whoever was going on sabbatical. Okay. Uh, and at the end of the year, I got hired. Very good. As a, uh, you know, an assistant professor or something. Yeah, I applied once. I I wasn't hired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd been I'd been teaching for a year there as the, right. you know replacing the guy who was on sabbatical that's great that's great so uh, so up to that point you you had uh no real ties with the kind of computational uh, oh, no. well and all the people it there. was but but uh i went uh howard gardner does that mean anything oh of you course know? of course it does okay well uh, 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 we, unless, we, uh, unless we're not talking about the uh, the theorist about multiple intelligences. As, that's uh, the guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we'd become friends. Uh, and he was, uh, let's see, how did it work? Uh, oh, yeah, he took me to a talk at MIT. He was at Harvard. Yes. He took me to a talk at MIT by Seymour Papert and Marvin Minsky. Right. Uh, and uh, I was quite uh, enchanted by what they were doing. Uh, it had nothing to do with music, of course, but uh, so the next day I went over there and found Marvin and talked to him and he was, <laughs> he was really, he was um, uh, self-taught, I think. Anyhow, he spent he he sat and improvised horribly <laughs> uh, at the piano. That was his great love. All right. Uh, and so, and he hired me to uh, be in his shop, so to speak. Uh, and that was sort of what sent me off in the direction that I been going in ever since that's amazing I, I went uh what was it called uh i don't know it was it was a special it was a separate lab uh, was it was that the the logo lab not yet not yet okay <laughs> it 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 became the, so, the group of people who were in electrical engineering in marvin's uh aura <laughs> uh, became uh, well. It was Seymour Papert who, who did the who did the whole logo thing, and he was in he was in the AI lab. It's really it bothers me to this day that AI has become what it has become because the AI lab at MIT in those days was a it couldn't have been more different from what's happened to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, as with many different things in the world, I don't think that AI has become anything. I think that just people superficially with the kind of continual need for instant gratification nowadays have just started using the term for something that is not AI, essentially. Exactly. I, 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 mean... I, I, I suffer the same thing uh, when it comes to 
data analytics and big data. So everyone now calls a big spreadsheet big data, and that really infuriates me. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like that, right? Yeah, right. Uh, uh, I I went with Howard Gardner to this talk, uh, and well, I I repeating myself. <laughs> no, please I do. <laughs> to find Marvin, and I was very surprised to discover that he was very much into music in his own way. Uh, and so he hired me in the AI lab. <laughs> wow. Uh, and that, uh, that was where I got into Logo. That's amazing. And it's, it, it's perhaps the antipodes to, uh, to my journey, which was starting with mathematics and computer science and uh -huh. infiltrating the musical world taking advantage of my technical kind of aspects yeah, and, and yeah. background. So it so is I did, exactly the opposite. I, I did, I did exactly the opposite. Into the, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, that was a life changer being in that uh, AI lab for a while. That's amazing. So, <laughs> so when did, so was it then initially working as a musician, but also absorbing things that technology could be harnessed for in order to serve music back? Yeah, well, I was always unhappy with the sort of traditional music theory stuff. I okay. didn't think it had to do with with what how music really worked. Uh, and uh, so I learned... You know, I learned. I developed something called Music Logo. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm very much aware of that. Uh, uh, <laughs> and well, all my students. Back, yeah. Well, I think back on it. Uh, I don't. I think it was sort of amazing that I got because I never had anything to do with that kind of stuff, but uh, it uh, sort of serious. AI seemed more like what uh, music could music theory could be than what I was experiencing as had been doing with music theory up until then. Oh wow! Okay. And that was how why I developed music logo. So, so did the development of music logo start as? asking the people in that lab to pay you back for the service the musical services that you had been providing was it was it a kind of fit for tat kind of thing or no i just i was there and living with them <laughs> and oh uh uh also we had uh graduate students and i was working with them uh because they weren't doing music Mm -hmm. So I sort of introduced music into the whole logo scene <laughs> okay. uh, and learned a tremendous amount uh, yeah. from from the whole environment. Well, you, you'll be uh, uh, amused to hear that uh, uh, music logo, although I have to admit it becomes even more difficult every year to 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 backtrack an operating system in order to be able to run and make sounds uh it is a compulsory <laughs> component for all of my music technology students wow amazing <laughs> yeah so, well do you know impromptu yes i do yeah okay because that's what music logo became yeah i do i do know but uh i uh i for compatibility issues, I tried to use a, a rendition of ML Win, Music Logo Win, uh, uh, which is one of the developing branches that allows uh, for, to, to use Logo for making sounds. Uh, and I tried to compile it in different ways so that now Macintosh users can, can also use it and all of that. Uh -huh. and, and I keep receiving complaints every year about how how gradually difficult and impossible it's becoming for them to run it uh -huh. but yeah I, but i i force it 
because I <laughs> want people to see the phylogenetic journey and how everything started from what you created in order to then now go to things like Scratch and things like Sonic Pi and different programming languages that can manipulate sound. Yeah. Uh, so it's very important for me, to, for people to see the the trajectory of this and how well, it Well, yeah, and I, I found that Music Logo really uh, uh, made available or visible or something, things about music that I really cared about. I mean, the whole procedural thing. Yes is uh very musical <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, and i think uh when i see the way the computer is used with music now it seems uh, just mechanical i don't know how else to put it okay so um but i really i haven't kept up with what with it with what's going on yeah, well, there's uh, there's a big discussion about, uh, but I, I assume that this discussion has been had since the 14th century about what is proper, <laughs> what is proper music and what is not. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's interesting to see how the uh, how the discourse propagates and uh, and and how many people can get offended by by new developments. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So it's 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 very entertaining to me. Uh, so uh, so with the establishment of of music logo, uh, did that then become its own thing within MIT, or no. were, you, were you always in synergy with with Seymour Puppets and his team? Well, Seymour left the uh, the logo lab disappeared. What happened was that something called the, the Division for Study and Research in Education, DSRE, okay. uh, uh, was born. <laughs> and I moved there from the music department. Okay. I moved into that and did and taught uh, courses. Uh, I taught a course called The Role of Metaphor in Music uh and design, I think, something like that. Uh, so, uh, and I got interested in music in a new way, uh, both in the in the DSRE and when I was in the logo lab. So, so is the uh, the uh, developing musical intuition book is is that the the offspring of that of that work? Is it absolutely all right? right. Okay. That's fantastic. So, 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 in terms of time, now we are we, we are around nineteen eighty. Then, uh, right? Okay. So the so this is about the year where the first per, IBM personal personal computer hit the, exactly. gra the ground. Running. I can remember very well. There was the the computer uh, when I first went into the AI lab. The computer uh, in that. Uh, floor and that where I was, it filled up a whole room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I I know that well because uh, at that time I was born in 1971, so uh, I was 10 years old when the first IBM PC came out, and uh, uh, the first IBM PC that came to Greece uh, was brought by my father, who was a professor of computer science, who is a professor. Oh, I see. Of science, uh, so before that, it was work. Uh, I was visiting him in uh, Siemens in Munich in Germany, uh -huh. uh, where he was a project leader for the information technology department, the informatics department. Yeah. And the computers there were filling whole rooms and whole buildings. Yeah. Uh, so the first I mean, IBM, I... PC, the first IBM PC that came to Greece. Uh, had an American power supply and I plugged it straight onto the wall and I burnt the power supply the first oh, day. <laughs> so we then had to wait another six months for, oh my the, God. New, for the new power <laughs> supply to come, uh, which was catastrophic. Yeah, but it was, uh, yeah. So I remember vividly that it was 1981 because that was yeah. my uh, 
my first introduction to a kind of standalone PC right in front of me, and I was absolutely elated when that happened. Yeah. Right. So that's great. Yeah, I can remember. Uh, I can remember sitting in my office in the DSRE, and some student standing at the door said, I just bought a computer. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> and I couldn't imagine what that meant. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so how did, I mean, after the publication of Developing Musical Intuition and with the advent of kind of personal computers and everything, uh, what what was the kind of main bread and butter uh, at MIT for you? Hmm. It's hard to get back to but get back what, there. <laughs> so was it was it mainly wall to wall teaching, or, or, or were you trying to get? No, I was trying to. I was trying <clears throat> working on developing music logo. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, well, like teaching that course on metaphor was partly because I was involved with a guy who was uh, a philosopher, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> that influenced the uh, what I got interested in. So uh, I was trying to. Well, that was when I developed Music Logo, uh, and had uh, and taught uh, a course. I don't remember what it was called, but it was certainly very. Uh, the Music Logo was very central to what I was doing with okay. students. Okay. Okay. So, so at the early years of students using Music Logo, were they using? terminals that were speaking to a microframe or uh, have, had you already migrated to personal computers and multiple um, stations? No, we were using, uh, we were using a, a shared computer somewhere. Oh, wow. okay. Okay. And that was an undergraduate level for, for the, yeah. for, your for your teaching. Yeah. At MIT. Right. So, so, the, so the people that were taking this course, Jean, were, were they, uh, general engineer uh, undergraduates or many different creeds and faiths the latter okay but not music majors not music majors there were hardly any music majors at at uh, at mit music yeah majors. well I, I was extremely surprised when i found out that mit had a music department yeah people I, always were <laughs> but yeah. but the music people in the music department seriously shunned the whole engineering business all right i remember i was thinking about it just the other day i have i had a little uh, meeting of uh faculty in, in the music department to try to show them what i was doing with music logo and they absolutely pushed it away they <laughs> wanted to have none nothing to do with it oh right. okay <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So um, that that's very interesting. And 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 your work at MIT continued until uh, it was it was two thousand two thousand and two something like that, wasn't it? Gosh, I can't remember. Uh, yeah. What happened there? Because I, I mean, at some point you ended up in California, back in California, but that was upon retirement, presumably from yes. from, MIT, from MIT. Okay, right. Uh, and I didn't retire until I was over eighty. Okay, <laughs> but 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 that was not enough. Uh, you, you had to go back to California and uh, and seek new employment, did you? Right, I taught at <laughs> US the first. A uh, couple of years I taught at USC. Okay. Uh, That's amazing. And, and then 
And then I got married and went to, and taught at the University of Chicago. Yeah. That's incredible. So, 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 so what are you working on now? What is, what is the uh, Gene Bamberger's day nowadays? Uh, <laughs> let me, let me get back to the, back to the present. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm, uh, I've written several books in the meantime, uh, and now I'm working on sort of, uh, okay, okay, see ya. Um, I'm working, I'm trying to write a book that is for the uh, general public, so to speak. Okay. People who, uh, but doing the kind of stuff that, uh, uh, impromptu is all about. Okay. So it, does that have anything to do with things that you have written about uh, prodigious musicians, like the chapter that you wrote for, for Gary McPherson's uh, edited volume? Well, I, can't, it... I can't even remember that. But... Yeah. Uh, I remember that you, you, you wrote something about prodigies uh, in... Uh, uh, in the Child as Musician, that was uh, a, an edited volume that Gary McPherson let me, edited. Let me get rid of this telephone. That's okay. Mm. Okay. Now, you were saying? Uh, there was... Uh, a volume edited by Gary McPherson some years ago uh, yeah. uh, about the child as musician. And I remember that you wrote a wonderful chapter about uh, prodigies yeah. in, in that. So, so is what you are preparing now relating to prodigies or is it? No, just not at all. Not, not at, at all. all. Okay. It's just trying to help people who are or just the general public how to get more into the music they listen to all right well that would help me as well then that's <laughs> i i look forward to that well so, uh the the i've written uh in the other books that are out there are chapters which mm -hmm. relate which are relevant to that uh, process so so more about reflexivity the the work that you've done in, in being reflective or yeah i suppose no but it's more try taking the stuff that you usually find in music theory mm -hmm. but making it more digestible <laughs> okay so 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 essentially not starting with schomburg's book then is that is that <laughs> <laughs> right, right. All right. Okay. Because but, that was the but there, oh. but but like uh, the other some of the other books, it's it's a uh, it's learned to do by doing. <laughs> okay. So so would you say then that uh, through lived experience and through actual work and praxis you're celebrating principles that are very close to jazz education philosophy? To, who, to jazz. Jazz. Yes. Because, I mean, this, this, is very, this, this sounds very closely aligned to what jazz educators do, to, to, to learn through doing instead of kind of learning the rules. Yeah, but I think the doing is very different. <laughs> okay. So, 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 what is your angle to this? Uh, I haven't, I haven't been there lately. But, uh, well, if you if you look at uh, uh, the books, particularly, I think the first book, um, it starts the uh, the turning music theory on its ear. Is it? Something, yeah. Well, that that okay, 
Okay. Uh, That's right. It starts out with, um, I forgot. That's okay. I think that I can, uh, I can find it. Yeah, the first book is called, yeah, <laughs> the first book is called The Mind Behind the Musical Ear. Okay. <laughs> Um, that's great but it starts out with what I think people uh, can oh I know it starts out with tune blocks uh, oh right okay uh, and you uh, so you're given uh, uh, a whole melody uh, and then you're given uh they're not just arbitrary blocks, but they're they're functional blocks, okay. functional segments, and you have to put the segments together to make the whole block to make All the right. whole tune. Uh, so, so that is the uh, the celebration of constructionism then in yeah, in, in its right. full glory, which, yeah? which was um, a big influence. All right. With, uh, so, so Jean, be, because I'm aware that I've been I've been taking a lot of your time, and and you might be getting tired. I just wanted to ask you just one or two uh, last questions because yeah. I I don't, I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, I'm I'm very grateful for for you taking the time to speak to me. It's okay. So so if someone was fortunate enough to to have Jean Bamberger in front of them and ask her for her advice with the power of hindsight, her advice about what would be the best way forward for the newly born child. For if the they, newly born child. <laughs> if, if, the, if they wanted for their child to naturally enjoy, develop, appreciate, celebrate music. It's interesting what, because I'm actually facing that very question. All right. Not with a child, but uh, with a guy, uh, an adult who has all quote always wanted to play the piano. Okay. Uh, and uh, so I just had my first lesson with him, and I've never, I've never done that. I've never. Uh, started out with somebody who wanted to play the piano and had no background okay. uh, preparation for it. Um, so you're asking the question I'm asking myself, how, okay. should I, how should I begin with him? And, and I think and... I began all wrong. I began by uh, asking him to play uh, major scales in different keys or just three keys. Uh, and okay. showed him the fingering and uh, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but I don't think that's the way to begin uh, I I don't quite know what is the right way to begin <laughs> um, really I uh, um, because there are two things that I'm trying to do at once one is to give a feel of the hand on the keyboard uh, and how to move on the keyboard. And the other is uh, how to get some understanding of how tonal music works. Uh, and I'm, uh, I haven't answered either of those questions. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, I would be, I would be very interested to uh to see how this develops when you are starting to gather some of the answers. <laughs> I mean, I have a, you know, from everything I've been doing, I have a idea, some, I have uh, pretty clear ideas of how to help somebody hear mm -hmm. what's going on in a piece of music, but how to play, I've just never done it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never, so, I, there was about it, maybe one or two years when I needed to make some money that <laughs> I had a couple of piano students, but I didn't take it seriously. All right. I think that my wife, who was a professor of piano pedagogy and, uh -huh. and, group, and group piano pedagogy, 
will find that absolutely fascinating. <laughs> the the, uh, the uh, metacognitive pondering about this. Uh, I, 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 so coming back to the power of hindsight, uh, Jean, just my last question. So if you if you had the 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 possibility or the uh, the luxury of uh, gathering all of the, the the wealth of knowledge that you have gathered over these years and uh, snuck a little uh, <laughs> I told you so piece of paper to your past self when you were at the time where you were deciding what to do with your life would you would you have advised a uh, younger gene to do something differently? Huh, what an interesting question. <clears throat> well, I think I was, by the time I was in college, I was torn between all the theoretical stuff, which interested me, uh, and being a piano player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I really have never resolved that. I've never resolved the relationship between music theory uh, as I think of it and uh, do it uh, and uh, actually playing the piano. I, I I don't put them together very much. I see. But, but I do, well, that's not true because uh, one of the things that I think about a lot in playing the piano is grouping or phrasing, whatever you want. Uh, uh, and I still, I'm, I've been playing a Haydn piano sonata. Uh, and at the very beginning, I've been struggling with uh, one at the, the very first phrase, how to, how to group it. Uh, and uh, anyhow, what what was your question? I'm wandering off. No, uh, no, no. You were you were spot on the discussion that I wanted to to be part of, which is okay. What would right. you What would you advise your younger self to uh, to do differently? Oh yeah, of hindsight. hindsight. Well, so first of all, uh, uh, what I don't know what else to call it, but music theory. But I certainly would. Uh, include in how to wiggle your fingers all right okay. <laughs> i would include uh and it's uh well i've uh, i've gone in the other direction that is to say i've i've gone to how to help people who aren't musicians mm -hmm. to understand what's going on i would like to uh be able to in incorporate some of that stuff into how to wiggle your fingers <laughs> that's great well there's there's plenty of time and we're looking forward to your published research about that as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's incredible I, uh i would well, like i'd like to think about writing something about that yeah well uh jean you are a tour de force and i'm <laughs> i'm very grateful that you actually took the time time of your day to to speak to me humble little me about your work and about your well, life it's a it's a pleasure to have someone to talk to about all of that i am <laughs> i'm extremely grateful and i'm also extremely grateful about your willingness to to examine one of my students and uh we can yeah. discuss that further when when the submission has occurred so uh that's, <laughs> that's absolutely wonderful so thank you thank you so much i uh I'm looking forward to uh, uh, just tidying up the video and our and our uh, recording. And uh, when I have processed it, I look forward to making it available so that you can you, you can refer to it and uh, listen to it. I hope yeah. that uh, uh, you're going to be happy about our discussion and about uh, the the quality of the recording. Yeah, well, I'll be very curious to see what it what it looks and sounds like uh, from a distance, so to speak. That's fantastic. That's absolutely wonderful. Well, okay. thank you very much. I, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. And uh, all of my best wishes and many thanks from, from London. Well, 
and a happy rest of the year for you. Thank you very much, Jean. Pleasure it was it was it was a great pleasure to to meet you in person and talk to you. You 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 have been a great okay. inspiration for I'll my work and for many of my students. That's fantastic. Okay, I will look forward to the next step. Thank you okay. so much. Take care. Okay. Have a nice have a nice day. You too. Bye. Bye.